HTTV in association with Absolute Warehouse Services. Julian, prior to the Manchester United game, we announced that Phil Hodgkinson will replace Dean Hoyle as owner and chairman of Huddersfield Town. How's that process going along? Okay, so we're, in, we're still in process, so we're hopefully coming to the sort of final hurdle. Um, <clears throat> so Dean obviously wanted to get the announcement out, rightly so. I think it was great for him and his family to receive the acknowledgement that they did. Um, but in technical terms, <clears throat> we, can't, we couldn't conclude and still can't conclude until Huddersfield Town becomes an EFL club. We became an EFL club formally last Friday at the AGM for the, in the conference in Portugal. And we're literally now in the hands of the EFL to finalise the, the fit and proper or directors and owners test or whatever you call it these days. Um, so literally we're hoping pretty quickly, fingers crossed, hesitate to put a date on it, but you know, we're literally in their hands just to finalise it now. But everything is on course and going as expected? Yeah, everything was up to speed by the time we clearly announced. Dean had confidence in the fact that we were announcing when we did. Um, but we're all sat in the knowledge that <clears throat> we're kind of no, no longer going to be a Premier League club. There's little point in pursuing a process with the Premier League, wait for the EFL, but then the formalities are we're not an EFL club until we get our share back officially, which we did on the 7th of June on Friday. Uh, so this week, hopefully things accelerate um, and we should get concluded fairly quickly. And whilst that is going on, obviously everyone knows that the transfer window is open now, but even though Phil hasn't yet been ratified by the EFL, there's still lots of things going on behind the scenes at the club. No, absolutely. So <clears throat> until Phil formally takes control, then Dean's still in control. Mm -hmm. So we're still able to get on, make decisions. Uh, we're keeping Phil informed of, of things that are going on. He's, he's engaged in communication terms, but in, in formal terms, you know, Dean still owns it. So we, we continue with that. But Dean and Phil are both understanding that we've got to get on with some things and that's absolutely what we're doing. And obviously it helps when you have Jan Ziva as head coach and he knows exactly the type of players that he wants to recruit into his system. Yeah, so uh, Jan's been very clear since he came here. He wants to play a 4-3-3. He's been very clear with the recruitment guys exactly what he wants. So, <clears throat> as you know, at the end of the season, we lost eight players, a combination of people out of contract, not taking options on players, a couple of loan players that we didn't continue with, um, obviously punching that we sent back. So there, there were eight in total. Um, we're currently in transit with five, so we're not sat idle. We, we are... <laughs> Uh, progressing to bring players in as quickly as we can um, but it's early days in the window but we're on with five and hopefully we get those concluded. How does that process work in terms of identifying targets, watching them and then bringing them in? Yeah so um, we've established what we call a football forum so it's a group of key stakeholders uh, which is the owner whichever one that's going to be at any given time Myself, ordinarily the head of football operations would drive that group, but as you know, we, we haven't had one for a while. We're on with that as well as a process, so we're interviewing for that um, in the next fortnight. And hopefully we can bring that to a swift conclusion as well, because I think that's a really important part of what we do here. Um, but we think uh, in the football area we've got good people. So Josh Marsh, head of recruitment and the team. Uh, John Iger from a performance point of view. Lee Bromby from an academy point of view. Mark Fagan from a player care point of view, you know, we have some good people running their departments. Um, I spend a little bit more time here, the owner spends a little bit more time here and we try and fill that gap. Fundamentally though, we need that person, I think, to, 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 to run optimally. Um, so as soon as that person's in the building, it will be a lot better for everyone. Uh, but we're pressing on as a group. Um, Jan, central to that. Um, working with Josh particularly very closely on the types and then it comes back to us in terms of affordability and where they fit in our in our model and then we make collective decisions and we and we press forward. When you have a football forum like that is it easier then for a head of football operations to kind of slot in and understand how the whole club works? I think so uh, because you know we are we have been and will be an owner managed club so we have owners who are very interested entrepreneurial got ideas want to be involved in that context uh, having people in a room together talking about ideas is the best way forward um, i think the the meetings that happen become the head of football operations person's responsibility it's they set the agenda 
uh, they take the actions, they drive the thing forward. Currently that's me, but I'm doing it as an interim thing rather than as a, as a fixed sort of person. Um, but it should be much easier for anybody new coming in to quickly get a grasp of how this works here with involvement of, you know, Club Secretary, Operations Director Anne, FD, Darren, myself, Dean, Phil, you know, Josh, the team. So it's, it's a team effort, but it has to come together into a, a formulated plan and the Head of Football Operations is there to sort of drive that plan. I suppose now, like you said, everything's kind of ticking along this summer in terms of players coming in, interviews for Head of Football Operations. There's no reason really to panic, is there? No, I, I, I've always said to people, you know, the club has a really strong platform. So we, we've come out, we have two years in the Premier League, which has been fa fantastic, um, but we come out with a really strong platform. There's no sort of knee-jerk reaction here. There's no fire sale, as you see with some clubs that get relegated. I think we will have a trading window. I think players will go and players will come. As I said to you, we've, we've had eight leave. We've got five, hopefully, on the way in. Um, but then players beyond that, once the window really starts to liven up, people will leave here. And we are a trading club and we shouldn't be frightened of that. Um, we've got ideas for all areas of the club for coming in. Um, it's just then balancing off what goes and what comes. But there's no panic. I think we've got a good platform, got a good strong bunch of players, good staff here. Um, so we, we will take from the window what, what it brings us um, and then hopefully uh, fill the gaps with the, the right individuals.